no matter what you do in life, but it might be a particular proclivity of mine own. It seems like everything folds. Like, uh, I started out not knowing how to draw or paint. I did it when I was younger, but I took it, started taking it serious for my 20, when I was 21. Uh, yeah, I had like art block and, and depression and everything else. Uh, I did go in a wrong direction when I switched to digital and I uh, couldn't handle the digital functions and, and my work went to crap where I was doing a lot better in the physical world. Now I am better with uh, in digitally. Uh, which I am glad that I switched, but it's like I had a very a, a big period where it's like my work wasn't that good and the people that I was working with are gone now and everything else, but I started out small and the way you look at it, what I have perceived is like you start out and you don't know what you're doing and you have a blank canvas and then you draw a line and then you draw another line and then you mirror those lines and then you're like oh now I have something like two mirrored lines and then you curve the lines and you're of course draw again the, you draw the curve and you draw the curve and then you're like oh yeah I did this other thing where I was where I mirrored it and then it's two mirrored lines and now it's oh it's half a circle if I mirror it again it's a full circle and so everything you do in life unfolds it becomes an array it becomes a symmetry it becomes it is it builds on what you have done before and one of the things that will happen like when I went into digital it was a whole new field well it I had experience with, I have a lot of experience with digital but like translating uh, something into digital and um, the problem with me was that I wanted to be I, I was going really fast 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 like I drew fast on my notebook and then when it's in your notebook with a with a pencil it it looks a lot better than when you're doing it digitally because when you're digitally you get like the pixels and the and it starts and it's doesn't register right or it, it makes weird corners when you're and I, I want to keep this broad so that other people can uh, apply something of this too and not be too specific but what I want to say is like everything unfolds and everything is kind of like a mandala or like a fractal both in the visual field as well as in the more abstract thought and which is a much more difficult thing to explain to somebody that you can have like fractal thoughts that's like something that if someone is thinking concretely they might not spot the or if they don't have the patterns to spot see something like that it's like um, difficult to explain to them I have uh, difficulties with it myself because I am not primordially a verbal person even though I do think a lot and I get a lot of information while I've been drawing. Um, but the visual is like a, a more easy, an easier way to explain it to a person because everyone can see and you can demonstrate it by, by um, putting things together. Even though that's also not entirely true, if you are predominantly mm, thinking about maths and you just try to explain something visually, they might not have the prior knowledge of the vision either. And so It becomes strange because especially when you are learning 
it isn't very obvious and you don't know where you're going but once you start doing then it becomes like a lot more about in the moment being in the moment and in the moment you need to make decisions and then you need to make decisions about where you're going to be in a couple of years and you're going to have to put things into place and then things might not work out but yet you are learning so you can always piece things back together but what are you piecing together and how how and then there's also has to be relations with uh, sensory output uh, or input and with sensory input I mean like another human being is a, a, a is a sensory input um, which is a kind of a weird way of saying it but that's technically what it is you're like a brain and your brain is processing signals from all around you you like sound and vision and and another person is an input an unpredictable input something that you could learn to understand but uh, you're going to make mental leaps about how much of it you are going to understand you're not going to understand another person on the deepest most cognitive level you're not going to well you might uh, to a certain degree but then then that's more of a psychologist's way of viewing things and trying to understand and then but you're never going to you might look at a person and try to understand them but then you need to under you're not going to fully understand multiple people and there's layers of abstraction and and at what scale are you looking are you looking at a single person and then how they function and what they are thinking about but is it then that you are thinking about the person themselves or are you thinking about the thing that they are thinking about because then you're not thinking about the person themselves but the study of field that they are um in like let's say a scientist about whatever and then you uh, whatever topic like a, a quantum physicist like like if you're const constructing a quantum physicist and how they function and how they think are you therefore deconstructing the person or are you deconstructing the the thing that they are attracted to and what their subject is and are you and so you then need to study like across a wide array of things but then you're going to miss the details about the very very function about who what the thing that they are studying and then you need to, then there's like a you need to dissociate between this and that and and again that's something that happens in fractals and whatever like your well fractals maybe that's not the right way to put it I have to move forward you have to move forward there's always you're always moving forward you can't go back you can't go back and you have to move forward and then you have to draw on your experience or knowledge and your and then you keep move fo moving forward and moving forward and moving forward and then you're making decisions about what to acquire to enhance the things you already know and then to expand upon it like a mandala you're unfolding all the time and then you're putting more input into the mandala so that it becomes like a fractal but then a type of fractal that is more like itself similar but then as the more you put a new input into it like you, you expand on the equation the mandala keeps um, or the mandala the the fractal keeps changing it becomes it is self similar for as long as there is no input but as there is more and more input being drawn into the fractal
the more there's going to be differences and where you want the fractal to go is dependent on your the thing well where you want it to go you need to put input into it that is different from the other like for example fractals i have uh, looked at a lot of you know fractal art or the fractal zooms and it has become a part of my thinking about life and the only reason that's part of my thinking about life is because i have been thinking a lot about fractals and looking at them and if i would be a person that never looked at those fractals i would never have become a person that thinks about fractals and so you need to consciously take a lot of things and put them in your head so that at a later time it has become ingrained into you, into your brain, into your being and it is part of your thinking and then uh, you're part of your making sense of the world and then you expand more and more and more and then it becomes a, a you know, a, a very high layer of abstraction and it becomes you you see like meta things into it because then it's no longer you're just looking at a fractal you're looking at other things and you're seeing the fractals in it and you're seeing then then those things become ingrained and you're like oh i've spotted these patterns and i've spotted them in a way of fractals and then where can you see that again and then because you have another subset of like uh, seeing patterns of fractals in uh, certain things you have then more data where you can go oh and these are this is a different pattern like for example um, you've spotted patterns in, in a variety of things and then you're like oh wait this is like a golden ratio this is like this moves like this you can see another pattern like this is a pattern of fractals moving in a golden ratio and so you're constantly everything uh, expanding mathematical thinking on one thing on the other and the same thing happens with language where you are reading and you're spotting words and you're seeing words or you're doing math or whatever and you're seeing patterns and those you see the, how those patterns go but like you need to be a certain you need to be a person that is uh, versed in a certain topic to be capable of seeing those patterns you're not going to see patterns in things that you don't know about and so it is important to learn and learn a lot and and think about what you are learning about and i have a, 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 a struggle with like the concept of narcissism because you see narcissism and you see the the the, the things that they ascribe to it and you 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 you're, you're like okay i get it but you're not entirely getting the point and you're it, it feels sometimes more like a, a, like a political statement or, a, or like, I don't know. It, it sometimes feels more like you're trying to write something that isn't. Now, of course, I know that in psychology you can't think black and white and be like, oh yeah, this is like this straight just because it sounds or looks like it, that therefore it is it because what I want to say about that is like you have to look for the best things there are that you can learn about and learn about those things and with narcissism in psychology one of the things that they say about being a narcissist is like you want to only be associated with the best 
or you're you're only looking at the the best things and whatever and you there's like no room for other things but there's like that's a very very heavy thing to say that's like well do you say then that focusing on people who are addicted to heroin is a better option and that if you don't focus on those people you are therefore narcissistic and a bad person no i don't think so i don't it's a if you're focusing hard on the highest things and the highest quality i think that's going to be good for the world but that's, a, that's a, also again a dangerous statement because a lot of people do really bad things thinking they are doing good for the world but i also don't think that think consuming low quality information or or being labeled that that that, la that part of the label is like i think when you look at psychology, a lot of terms and things that are like even psychopathy and like whatever, a lot of those terms are dragged out of their original meaning and they start to mean political statements rather than something that is, is like something that you could actually say about like a person and because of their the way they they it it looks very much like like there's like a lens like a societal lens put on on certain traits that have more to do with the society than the, it has actually to do with with the person like um for example not having empathy or being Um, now of course I know it's like multifaceted and some of those things might, you know, if you are well versed enough in it you understand like there might be other factors contributing to making someone look like they are a certain thing or a certain diagnosis but actually it's more like the outside world impressing that on them but i from my experience with psychologists and psychoanalytics and all that stuff they often don't think that way they don't they aren't or they're hiding it i don't know but it seems that there are biases towards thinking towards looking at the surface and not seeing looking at the environment that the environment might be contributing to the actual malfunctions or the the malfunctions that's already one of those things like your the, the, the lot of the psychology is like about how a person is like malfunctioning in society but like are they malfunctioning or is it a, a, a more a broader problem that causes to people to think that they are malfunctioning well they're really not malfunctioning they're actually like that they're the it's it's not uncommon like you you look at history there's scientists and people who say a lot of really 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 weird stuff that at the time is not very welcomed and then you're they're labeled as a, as like there's something wrong with this person and then later it ends up being like oh wait they were right the problem was with the people like we don't burn people anymore for being witches we don't uh do perform have doctors performing bloodlettings i am seeing this shit in society every day i am seeing i hear people talk and they're like oh yeah the doctor knows best he has the degrees like don't forget that people with degrees did bloodlettings and exorcisms on people as a standard doctor's practice 
and that the modern, uh, the, the father of modern sciences, Leonardo da Vinci, was a bastard son that never even went to college and is like, um, has, is the list, is at the footing of basically all of modern science, like, and you're, you're going like, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. I know people, I know so many people with degrees that don't know what the fuck they're talking about, that are fucking idiots, and the reason they got their degrees is because they paid off teachers, they fucked the teachers, they... They're, they're, they did shitty stuff to other people and they're not supposed to in their fucking place. And these people are getting ahead and saying and doing really stupid shit that makes no sense whatsoever. That is usually like short term thinking. COVID-19 is, is short term thinking. Oh, if you wear a mouth mask, you're stopping the virus. The people who wear a mouth mask are getting less sick in the short term. But then the disease adapts and lays dormant for m many years. And then all of a sudden people start to die with a disease that they have been having for years that no one knew there was, was there because that's what you're doing. You are causing diseases to adapt and lay dormant. So nobody uh, sees, like, like HIV or AIDS, that's how those types of disease are created. Because it, there's a survivability uh, thing about, like if you're, it comes from Africa, if I am right, right? AIDS or HIV, it comes from Africa. Tribes don't interact very much, maybe a couple of times a year. Having diseases lay dormant for long periods of time before starting to kill people is something that um, is going to be an adaptation of a virus. At some point, you might create diseases by having people not have contact that are going to adopt like HIV or AIDS. And then, be, you know, we might not know the disease is there until it's too late. Like if everyone is already infected with a disease that has been laying dormant for years and years and years, and nobody knows and people start to die and they are f falling dead in, in, in swats, like, you're already infected and you can't help it anymore. Thinking, this type of thinking is very, very, very prevalent. Very, and you keep seeing it and you keep seeing it. And it's like, I obey my TV. I cannot think critically about what I am told. And that it's even make, made worse if you have like bad people in place who, who want, need to have their their uh, biased opinion validated and can't handle critique or any sort of... It's become a genocide. <clears throat> and you're seeing it over and over and over again. Like, these people are like not questioning the thing they are told. And once they are told the thing, they do absolutely horrible stuff just because they are told. Now, I am human as well. I might have biases where I do the exact same thing, but I think it's kind of very sad and pathetic. And it's, you see it played out over and over and over again, and it seems like nobody learns. N nobody learns, and some people might not learn just by the mere fact that they use it as a political agenda and then they abuse it and they don't care about the reason behind it. Everything is a mandala and everything expands and your knowledge and Comprehension expands, your thinking expands, and it all expands, and you learn, and you start to see, and you comprehend, and you... 
the more you bombard yourself with information and knowledge and the more you learn to function and to do things and get into habits and grooves and there's a lot to be said here but that's what I wanted to say today it's not fully structured yet I have uh, there might be some structures to it but I went started with like life is a Mandela and things unfold and then I entered psychology and a whole bunch of other stuff and then now we're here and I uh, am going to put this to a halt and right now I do feel like I want to keep talking though I want feel like I want to keep talking I've trained myself to keep talking I've trained myself to keep talking and to learn and think about things and to think I'm currently doing psychology neurology psychiatry uh, quantum fi I think that's because it's easier to read from Wikipedia than uh, stuff from quantum physics because there's a lot of symbols there and there's a lot of things that I don't know even though I have a couple of years of learning quantum physics behind my belt so I have an understanding of quantum physics but I don't fully understand it in the way a quantum physicist understands it of course but I am definitely going to want to keep going in the quantum physics realm and I am writing I have written a lot of words today and I am happy to have said this and I feel like I want to keep talking but if I'm going to keep talking it's going to be a new recording